So when Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania was first announced at Nintendo's E3 2021 showcase, there was a lot of positive buzz for the game online. After what had been years of online begging, Sega finally relented with the remaster of the Super Monkey Ball games people actually care about, making an appeal to old heads while intriguing potential new players. You probably saw a lot of these monkeys on your Twitter timeline pre-release, as well as a barrage of announcements of progressively more wild and wacky characters being thrown in the ball, a marketing strategy very reminiscent of the recent Super Smash Bros. Brothers game. A few days after the game came out, however, the hype quickly evaporated and the public reception of Banana Mania has been middling to say the least. And that's a damn shame because Super Monkey Ball is one of my favorite arcade style games ever made. The objective? Simple. Get the monkey in ball through goal. The catch being that you don't have any control over the monkey in the ball, but instead control the stage itself, allowing for all sorts of crazy tricks and gameplay that's yet to really be replicated in any other video game franchise. The stage to stage progression of the original arcade game would be fleshed out in the GameCube launch title Super Monkey Ball. That, along with its sequel, Super Monkey Ball 2, as well as Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, an Xbox and PS2 enhanced port of 1 and 2, will go on to become the golden era for the series. I have a lot of personal nostalgia for Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2. They're some of my most played games on GameCube, and I have a long-standing personal tether to the series. Needless to say, I was ecstatic. I was ecstatic. I was ecstatic. Of, okay, it's the new Monkey Ball game. It's... I, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm about leak. to be on fucking suicide watch, dude. I was ecstatic when it was announced that the Golden Era games would be coming back in the form of Banana Mania, a from the ground up recreation of all the arcade stages from 1, 2, and Deluxe, as well as recreations of the 12 iconic Monkey Ball Party games. Part of the reason for my excitement, beyond nostalgia, was that this was going to bring Monkey Ball back to its arcade roots. If this is your first Monkey Ball game, you probably don't know that aside from the three games I've mentioned remade in this collection, the Monkey Ball franchise has been serious ape shit. I has had a rocky transition ever since he tried to become a platformer, or how they tried to do Monkey Ball with a stupid gimmick, like touchscreen controls, or motion controls, or fucking jumping. In fact, Banana Mania has quite the dark origin for a game about cute monkeys rolling around in colorful balls, as the creation of this game was predicated on the success of the previous Monkey Ball release, Banana Blitz HD. Yeah, remember that game? Yeah, of course you don't. This was a controversial move, as literally no one in the Monkey Ball fanbase likes Banana Blitz on Wii. So Sega decided to jangle the carrot of remakes people actually wanted with a whatever port of a whatever game. But hey, enough Switch kids who didn't know any better bought it, so now we have Banana Mania. And for that, I thank you. I guess. Look, I'll be brutally honest, I never believed for a second that this remake would surpass the original. Taking a glance at two seconds of footage made it clear that this was a tightly budgeted, quickly produced double-A title from inside of RGG Studio. Ever since its gruesome death after the great You Draw debacle of 2011, double-A video games have slowly but surely been crawling back from the ashes, mostly in the form of these low-budget, low-priced remakes of well-remembered titles from Gen 6. And it's working out, for the most part. Last year, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Bottom Rehydrated sold over 2 million copies, and that game was made by some developer you've never heard of in Austria in only 10 months. I preface with all that to say, despite Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania genuinely being the series' best game since 2005, this remake does a really poor job capturing all of what made the original Super Monkey Ball game special to myself and so many others back on the GameCube. Banana Mania is quite simply Super Monkey Ball Zero Sugar. Yeah, it kinda tastes the same, a few might even find it a suitable substitute, yet it lacks all the sugar, calories, and general kick a can of original Coca-Cola has, leaving you with a bland and somewhat flavorless experience. I mean, take a look at the stage break from Super Monkey Ball 1. Ready? Go. Meanwhile, you go play this level in Banana Mania, That's what Banana Mania is missing. It's missing the bonk. Okay, but what do I mean when I say bonk? Well, in Super Monkey Ball's case, bonk mostly refers to the excellent level of panache the game features in selling its physics engine. It's the secret sauce that makes Super Monkey Ball such a thrilling game to come back to over and over again. For example, take a look at the textures in the jungle stages in both the original and Banana Mania. You look at the checkerboard tiles of the original jungles and it's really pleasant to the eye. The shades of green used in the level are very realistic and reminiscent of how a golf course looks when kept in great shape. There's also a light roughness pattern to it that gives the texture some much needed depth. It goes a long way to selling the feeling of physically rolling the ball across the surface. 
Taking a gander at Banana Mania's jungle stage, meanwhile, features much more vibrant greens that are not as realistic looking, and the checkerboard tile set is just less visually detailed overall. There is just a level of tactileness in the original game's visual and sound effect libraries that's completely gone in Banana Mania's more bubbly, bumpy aesthetic and soundscape. When you send I flying down this slope and gravity slider at over 200 miles an hour, he becomes so uncontrollably fucking fast that it looks like you're sliding backwards. Every aspect of the animation and sound design plays into this effect. The substantial amount of sparks flying out on all sides from the friction of the ball rolling down the stage, the fact that I.I. is rotating at the ball at a thousand RPM, and of course the dynamic rolling sound effects. Meanwhile, you play the stage in Banana Mania, and it's just nowhere near as kinetic or tactile. In fact, Banana Mania just feels like a much slower speed in general. Look at this side-by-side -side comparison and tell me what game you'd rather play. The lack of bonk is most notable in stages that require you to fall great distances. The original games feature an array of smacking sound effects that have a weight and impact to them. I mean, you listen to this and then you listen to that and it's just not it, Chief. Even the soundtrack didn't make it out unscathed. It shares similar problems with the sound effects. That is to say that most new renditions are mixes that feature a more happy party vibe. While this jolly tone is much appreciated on the title screen, and I really do love this opening theme, by the way, the rest of the tracks really don't compare for me. Let's make a comparison and listen to one of my favorite tracks from the original games, Inside the Whale from SMB2. You listen to the remix version and it's this plucky all-state insurance commercial backing track, but then I hear the original track and I am immediately warped The bass is hella funky and the synth has to go in the books as one of my top 10 favorite sounds ever. The original game soundtracks were just overall much crunchier, harder hitting synth tunes than what we got in the remake. See, even the OST had bonk. Credit where it's due though, I do genuinely love that they turned Bubbly Washing Machine's track into a future bass song. It even has the chords. But unfortunately for Banana Mania, its problems with game feel don't just stop at visual and auditory issues. The raw control in the original Monkey Ball games is simply way more freeing, whereas Banana Mania's tilting feels a lot more restrictive. This is mainly due to the fact that original Monkey Ball games use a square analog gate for the analog stick, whereas the remake uses a circle analog gate. Uh, okay, so Tom told me that I needed to explain this point more, so I'ma just do my best. All right, so if you've ever been to an arcade before, chances are you've encountered one of these bad boys. This is a joystick, and the perimeter that surrounds where the stick can move is its analog gate. Now, the two most common styles are American style circle or octagonal gates and Japanese style square gates. The original Monkey Ball game in the arcade used a square gate, as you can see in the settings of the first game. However, Banana Mania is using a more modern circle gate. And the difference between the two? Well, I don't fucking know. All I do know is that I get more meaningful diagonal inputs in the original games. Thankfully, this is something that's easily fixed on the PC version by tweaking your Steam controller settings for Banana Mania specifically, and changing the analog gate from circle to square. It seriously makes the game play so much closer to the originals, and it only takes two seconds to do. However, on the console side, there's unfortunately no such option to change the analog gate. Because of this, the only version I could even possibly recommend right now is the PC version. I would also be remiss if I didn't shout out the already active modding scene for the remake on Game Banana. Because of mods, you can actually play Banana Mania with the original sound effects and play with ball with no monkey. Monkey with no ball. No mods for the original music though. You have to buy that shit sold separately. Yeah, I hate to do it to you, but we gotta talk about the rather gross DLC practices going on with this game. While the base game is an affordable 30 bucks, Sega bleeds the real ones an extra $10 to get both the original soundtrack and skins for the monkeys, which are absolute requirements for me. Banana Blitz on Wii marked a radical redesign and reboot of the original Super Monkey Ball aesthetic, and maybe it's just me acting like a 90s kid, but I fucking hate everything about this overly shiny, cheap, generic plastic look. But because we live in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate era, where crossovers are everything, we also have a small smattering of oddball DLC picks like Hello Kitty, Morgana, and Swayze from Monster Rancher. Are you fucking kidding me? The problem is all these guys are being sold for $5 a pop, just like Smash. But unlike Smash's DLC characters that have a full unique move list, toolkit, stage, and song, Monkey Ball characters are literally just a model that sits in the ball. Hell, even the Sega consoles, which are also $5 by the way, don't even rotate in the ball, making them a little disorienting for me to use. Outside of the Earth's real-world digital shop where you 
you can spend real world money on digital Hello Kitty. We have Banana Mania's in-game shop where you can spend in-game digital currency on Monkey Drip and Kazuma Kiryu. The point shop gives you an in-stage reason to go out of your way to collect bananas, something that was innately driven in the original game's design, given their arcade three lives only roots. While this is certainly a good solution to making bananas have some value, I more or less was able to buy everything in the shop after about 10 hours of play, and everything I personally wanted in about two. In-game shops are extremely hard to balance in any game, so I won't hold it too hard against it or anything, but it was something worth pointing out. Although I only used the original monkey models when I played, so I never actually bothered with this stuff anyways. But despite the terrible nickel and diming of the DLC, the whack sound effects, and the Unity-ass visuals, we're not even at the worst part yet! To me, I will always view the classic Super Monkey Ball games as an incredible local multiplayer experience, first and foremost. Yet, for some unfathomable reason, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania has the glaring, bewildering omission of local co-op main game arcade-style Monkey Ball. Few things truly get me down and actively disappoint me when it comes to features or lack thereof in a video game. This is one of those times where it really fucking hurts. A massive part of my love of Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 was being able to share it with other people. It's an arcade style game that literally anyone with a thumb can play. In fact, when it comes down to it, I might just have as much time, if not more, playing through the main game stages with friends and family as I have just going solo. This shit was an institution in the Kingma household. You gather your squad of Samba de Amigos, crack open a couple cold ones, start passing around the wave bird, and everyone's having a grand old time. You got your one friend who tried to be fucking slick and died on stage four so now you and the rest of your friends are laughing at him as he constantly trails one stage behind everyone else for the next 20 minutes these are iconic multiplayer moments and you just can't have that shit in Banana Mania! It's an especially tragic omission too when you consider the fact that since Banana Mania is on current generation hardware, it's able to load these stages and retries much faster than on the GameCube. They add these new expensive DLC characters, all these bold designs, all this drip, and for what? You can't use any of the unlockables in party mode for some unexplainable, unbelievable, incomprehensible fucking reason. They're only available in the main game arcade type mode, yet that's exclusively only one player now meaning all this variety in characters and customization elements, which the game was really hyping up in pre-release marketing, is only for you and you alone to enjoy. Which means if your friends are over and they want to play Monkey Ball and you only got Banana Mania, then you just have the 12 party games to play. In the original Super Monkey Balls on GameCube, the party games were an essential aspect of the Monkey Ball experience, not just some bullet point on the back of the box. RGG clearly recognized this to some degree, as all 12 of SMB2's party games made it into Banana Mania. However, it's clear to me that between the arcade stages and the party games, the former definitely had way more work put into it. While this was clearly the right call, it sucks that there even had to be a choice in the first place. As my dad would say, if you're gonna do something, do it right. These remade party games are destitute half-assed recreations. They are, dare I say it, dare I fucking say it, lazy. Let's talk about that word for a second, lazy. It's become a bit of a controversial criticism in gaming circles nowadays, and I can't necessarily blame people for feeling that way either. After all, when laziness gets mainstream gaming attention on a hellscape like Twitter, it's usually from some no-name chuckle fuck talking about Spider-Man puddles or Halo watermelons, aka shit that doesn't fucking matter to the game experience in any meaningful or impactful way to the end user. There's a big difference between saying that the devs were lazy versus that the product itself is lazy. I certainly don't envy the team at Ryuga Gotoku, truly no one busts more ass in the industry than they do right now. Did you know that this was their fourth game release this year? Yeah, after a full next-gen remaster of Judgment, the updated Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown, and the full AAA sequel Lost Judgment. Not to mention all the turmoil that must have been going on behind the scenes throughout development, with both longtime studio creative head Toshihiro Nogoshi and producer-director Daisuke Sato planning on leaving the studio, which was only finally officially announced during the writing of this review. But the party games are still shit! And that's what we're left with. What were once highly replayable subgames have unfortunately been remolded into a multiplayer suite that features all the game juice problems the main game had. Except way worse. So Monkey Race and Banana Mania is completely unfun in single player for the sheer fact that the AI is brain dead. I was finishing races way ahead of the pack, and since Monkey Race doesn't feature any items that directly target first place like say a blue shell, front running is a cakewalk. I replayed the whole Grand Prix in Monkey Race on SMB1 to see if I just became a god gamer since childhood and no! The original was much harder. I found the races to be a lot closer and kept neck and neck the whole way through, and made for some real chaotic races that had me yelling and laughing at the 
the TV. Yeah, it's no Mario Kart, but classic monkey ball racing was a genuinely fun time. Whereas I was kind of done with monkey race shortly after I rolled through all the tracks in the remake. To be honest, that's how I felt when I played most of the minigames. Monkey Fight was just a diet version of the original. Monkey Boat and Golf are okay to go through once and then never touch them again, although Boat is also way too easy. Monkey Bowling certainly doesn't have the same energy it once did, which is the same since bowling in RGG's Yakuza games feels so great and comfy. And then you have games like Monkey Billiards, which gameplay-wise is actually pretty good. I think the trajectory arrow coming off the ball that the Q will connect with is an extra piece of info that makes it a little too easy to sync shots, but that's a minor complaint. The real problem is the aesthetic. In Super Monkey Ball 2, you click on Monkey Billiards 2 and you agree to this. Yeah, you get one of the greatest songs ever played by human fingers. I've done nothing but loop this hour and 11 minute extended version on YouTube while writing for this video. The whole bar just has such a cozy vibe to it. I eyes in cowboy gear, chugging milk in the back. There's just a lot of life packed into this small billiards bar. And this party game is my introduction to nine ball and real life pool in general. So it has a really special place in my heart. So Banana Mania decides to recreate the less interesting pool bar from SMB1, which is nowhere near the same level of vibe. God fucking damn it. And I don't know what the fuck happen a monkey target it's the most beloved of all the party games in monkey ball history but it's now borked beyond belief i was about ready to call it unplayable before i figured out how it works regardless of whenever you open the ball the monkey will tilt down towards the seat with no input on the control stick you now have to tilt down on the analog stick ever so slightly to keep the monkey at a reasonable angle so it can make it to any of the platforms, let alone land on them. For the record, in the original games, they flew at a relatively straight angle and didn't require this amount of babying on the control stick. It took the most accessible and easiest to pick up party game and turned it into a frustrating, obnoxious chore to play. Honestly, kind of an achievement. Overall, I have to say that most, if not all, party games of Banana Mania are flat out not worth touching, which means, for all intents and purposes, this is a single player only game, which to me is the antithesis of the true monkey ball experience. Can you tell I'm really fucking frustrated by this shit? Isn't the point of a video game remake to take what made the original game good and improve it? So why is it that I've done nothing but complain about Banana Mania for being an inferior version in almost every way over the originals? That's where I gotta take a deep breath and let you know that it's really not all bad news. The modern quality of life additions as well as the game's general speed of play just barely make Banana Mania the easiest way right now to experience no must, no fuss Super Monkey Ball arcade gameplay and only that. When the Super Monkey Ball Twitter announced that the game was going to axe the classic three lives and five continues from classic SMB for unlimited retries at a stage, the results were expectedly mixed. While most contemporary gamers welcomed the change, some old school Monkey Ball fans thought it did a disservice to the core gameplay. As mentioned earlier, going out of your way to collect bananas no longer becomes necessary when grabbing 100 doesn't result in an extra life. Now, not to mention, when you only have 15 lives to get through 10, 30, or 50 stages in the original games, it requires you to play carefully and be focused on every single stage. You can't play stupid and get away with it. Now, the discourse surrounding the concept of limited lives being in both classic and modern games typically devolves into the Neanderthal mindset of limited lives equals outgated game design, which is a tad lacking in nuance to say the least. Limited lives are in fact a great game design tool to use when you're testing a player's ability at a gauntlet of obstacles and challenges. For for example, the original Super Mario Brothers, taken by a level-by-level -level perspective, is really not that hard of a game. What makes the game challenging and therefore replayable is that you only start with three lives, meaning that you have to play in replay in order to minimize your mistakes so you can make it to the end of the game and beat Bowser. Meanwhile, take another iconic platformer, Super Meat Boy. Despite both games featuring level-by-level -level progression, Super Meat Boy's levels are presented as isolated 10 to 20 second challenges to be overcome, with no connective tissue from one stage to the next. Unlike Mario's lives, power-ups, and coins. Super Meat Boy doesn't give a shit how long a stage takes you, how many times you die, or even necessarily how you touch Bandage Girl other than you just do it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that SMB should be less like SMB and more like SMB. Wait, hold on. I preface with all this to say that despite being a monkey ball old head, I think the jump to unlimited lives was the right move for Banana Mania. The reflex and puzzle boards that are super monkey ball stages are genuinely so much more relaxing to play through when the constant fear of a stupid mistake isn't looming over you. But Sam, you filthy fucking casual, you might say. Why, yes, I am. Despite my love of the series from a young age, I bore witness to more monkey ball stages in three hours with Banana Mania than I ever had with my near 20 year history with the series. On the GameCube Expert, had me by the fucking monkey balls in both games and I just never knew you could unlock more continues. For the record, my memory card just never ever saved my SMB data for some reason and I didn't care about the minigames, so I just 
Didn't know. I guess this is why my childhood was so tortured. I did get really good at advanced though. But even if you are actually good at these games, Banana Mania still presents something for you to work and practice at. Instead of the one credit clear, the remake recontextualizes the classic Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 course sets into full course time attacks. When crossing the last goalpost, you'll be shown your time, how many fallouts you had, as well as how many bananas you grabbed. This encouragement of speed running the level sets, in fact, raises the skill ceiling, as the game isn't now just about beating the course set without falling out, but also doing so as fast as possible. I love this more malleable Monkey Ball experience. If I just want to chill out, listen to a podcast, smoke a fat one, and fumble my way through expert I can do so or if I want to try to get better time on beginner I can also grind that out oh excuse me I mean casual god damn it why'd they have to go change the names what was wrong with beginner advanced and expert another aspect that the unlimited lives adds to the gameplay is the freedom to attempt and practice trick shots part of what makes super monkey ball so unique is that you can finish many of its stages in some truly zany goal tape snaps it's a game that has so much potential for styling on them hoes yet you YouTube search super monkey ball trick shot and like only a page of results comes up most if not from well over half a decade ago too. Banana Mania makes it much easier to practice trick shots by having a separate practice mode where every single stage can be selected and replayed until your heart's content. When I would play classic Super Monkey Ball, I'd be focused on just completing the stage at hand, but Banana Mania has me thinking more about what would be a faster or cooler way of completing the stage. It's led me to get a lot more out of replaying the stages than I already did, and I think that's an impressive feat. Wait, hold on, I wanted to keep this section of the video to just the positives, but I remembered this problem and it's most relevant here. Every five and then 10 times you die on a stage, the game will present you with an obnoxious yes or no pop-up if you want to engage the bitch-ass assist mode. Five times? Monkey Ball's fucking hard! And if you ever accidentally select yes and turn on assist mode, your whole run score and time will be wiped, even if you go into the settings and turn it back off before clearing the stage. And there's no option in the setting menu to turn this pop-up off either, which is extremely fucking annoying. If anything gets patched in this game, I hope it's this. But really, the biggest addition to the arcade gameplay is having full control over the camera on the second analog stick. Being able to adjust the camera free of having to move around your monkey just makes so many more stages less of a hassle to complete. As I've gone back to play the GameCube games for this review, it's the quality of life feature I've missed the most from Banana Mania, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. Also, a small thing I wanted to mention too was I appreciated the classiness of how they updated the levels in Racetrack that featured the Amusement Vision AV logo. Although I really wish the URL stage just had a new URL on it instead of I.I.'s face, but now I'm just nitpicking. So should you still get the game? Honestly, fuck no. As mentioned earlier in the review, there are some massive caveats to the console releases controls. So the only thing I could recommend is the PC version. And why would I do that when you can play the originals on Dolphin at your resolution of choice? Even with widescreen, if you don't mind a little jank. Initially, I thought Banana Mania can make for a good practice tool at mastering the harder stages from the classic games, except I found out the original games had a very similar practice mode all this time. You can even, eventually, unlock Infinite Continues too, albeit with still having to see the continue screen every three deaths. The original games have way more to offer when it comes to multiplayer too. I mean, Banana Mania is playable, that's why it has a 76 on Open Critic after all. At the end of the day, it is classic Monkey Ball, even if it's lacking many of the elements that made the classic game so fondly remembered in the first place. If you value convenience and easy access above all else, you'll probably think Banana Mania is a fine enough game. But I value games in the medium as a whole. In 10 years, will we look back at Banana Mania as the definitive way to play Super Monkey Ball? Will we even remember that it came out? I make an active effort to have the most optimal experience I can with the game. Where's the best place to play it? The best settings, best mods, best difficulty, everything and simply nothing about Banana Mania surpasses the original games, so I can't recommend it to you. Yet still, this will be the last good Monkey Ball game, probably forever. The truth of the matter is, is that the idea and mechanics of Monkey Ball were pushed to their limits in 1 and 2, and by the time Deluxe came out, Amusement Vision was clearly burned out on ideas. It's why we saw them try to pivot the monkeys into different kinds of party games and, well, you know the rest. I have no hope in a Super Monkey Ball 3 or anything like that. It's not a series that could thrive in the 2020s and beyond, but at the very least it deserved its one last hurrah into the sunset to be much better than this. Hey, thank you so much for watching our video review on Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. If you found this video insightful or funny and want to see more like it, make sure to give this video a thumbs up as well as leave a comment to appease the YouTube elder gods. And in the meantime, why don't you check out some of our older content, like either more reviews, guides, and other equally based gaming content right here on Turnstyle. Take care.